Good morning, this is Pond Boy from Pond Boy's Angling Adventures, a traveling fishing show, and today we are going to talk about kayaks. Now, why would you want to own a kayak if you don't know, don't own one already? Um, for boat owners, it'll get you into waters that you haven't, you can't reach with your regular boat, especially really weedy waters, um, reeds, tons of lily pads, you can just glide right over the top that sees a grass that you find in some of the small rivers go over it no problem get back in those nook and, nooks and crannies gives you also a little bit of solitude and it's good exercise which is not the reason i kayak <laughs> i do not like exercise however um for you that don't fish why do you want a kayak well it is the closest thing that you will be able to afford before you can jump into a boat and um why did i get a kayak well, I got a kayak because at one time I did have a boat. Um, I have a son with special needs, and so we sold it to help pay for some therapies. Um, at the time, I wasn't using it. wish I didn't sell it, but, you know, so, so be it. And one of my friends, um, Ted, his nickname is uh, Sooner Bass, had two kayaks and said, hey, you know, why don't you come out and try kayaking? And the second I was in it, I realized that this is something I should have been doing all along. And I think a lot of guys, once they get a kayak, they realize... You know, why haven't I been doing this? So he had um, he had just bought himself a new sit-on-top kayak. A sit-on-top is when you sit on top, and a sit-in one is one where you sit in and you're surrounded by plastic, and he let me use his sit-in. So um, we went a couple times, and I was hooked, absolutely hooked. And I am on a budget like many people. got three kids, you know, mortgage, job, whatever, and I needed to get, you know, I really need to get a kayak. And he's like, okay, um, you know what? I only have so much room in my shed. I'm not using this one. He goes, I'm going to give you a really good price on it as long as you promise to go out with me. So I was like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, So he gave me an awesome price on it. And I officially had my first kayak, which is a nine. My first one, and I still use it all the time, is a nine and a half Heritage Featherlight. And it's only 40 pounds. All right. And then this year, um, a friend of mine, Jason, his nickname is Dark Star. Um, he has a blog as well. They both have blogs. Uh, Ted's is one last cast. Um, Jason got a Hobie, which is a top of the line kayak, and I got his t uh, Tameric Anger from Lifetime, a uh, ten foot sit on top for a phenomenal price. Brand new kayaks range anywhere from affordable to you know what you're going to pay for a good used boat. Um, so anywhere from used, you can get them like I did for under three hundred bucks. New start, the cheapest one started about four hundred bucks, and they go all the way up to you know two to four thousand, depending on what you're looking for and what options. Um, which kayak? What kind of kayak would be right for you? Well, first you want to look at your budget. What can I afford? Can I afford a sit on top? Can I afford a top of the line one? Or you know, do I just need to get in the water? In my case was I just need to get in the water. Um, uh, which one do I want? Well, there's benefits to both. Um, also, you have to take in the size of the kayak. A nine foot, ten foot kayak will fit in the back of a pickup pretty good. Um, I always hated having to get a minivan. You know what I mean? I thought, oh, I can only losers have minivans. I can't, you know, I don't want to be one of those dads. When we had our uh, third child, we got a minivan. And I hate the way they look on the outside, but they are pretty awesome. And then the fact that I can actually put both of my kayaks in there, my 10-foot and my 9-foot, at the same time, once I put down the Stone Go seats, minivans are awesome. All right, so if you have a minivan with some seat, you know, you're able to pull out the seats or fold them down or whatever, and you stay 10-foot or under, you will be able to just slip that kayak in and out of there in a flash. Pardon me. So... There's benefits to each kind of kayak. Um, obviously, the bigger kayaks, you're going to either need a trailer, or you're going to have to, you're gonna have to get some sort of um, kayak holder. Uh, Thule makes some good ones uh, for the top of your car, van, or truck. Um, bigger kayaks will get you in bigger water. Um, some of the bigger kayaks have um, pedals in them. Some of them have motors in it. Um, Although a lot, of, if you're planning on doing tournaments, a lot of the motors the motors will not they will not allow you to use your motor during um, tournaments because they want to keep it a, a paddling pedal sport, which is you know kind of how kayak started. So I, I can understand that. A sit on top basically is what it says. You sit on top of it, all right. So you're sitting. It has like little 
dense for your legs seats of all different kinds um obviously the more you spend the better your seat um if you have a fragile butt like mine you'll be very jealous of your friends that have you know suspended seating but you sit on top and what are the advantages of the sit on top warm weather um when you're in your shorts you know you can straddle the kayak you can sit sideways on it get your legs wet um you can shift your body weight move around um some of them you can stand on and you can move around and stretch and um when you're lure fishing say bass um northern uh, what have you 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 have a lot more you're not surrounded by plastic which means you can use larger rods larger handles um for example if i'm bass fishing in my sit-in and i want to do jerk baits i have a rod with real short handle because i need to make that jerk bait motion if i can't use a long handled rod you know and make that kind of a motion in my sit-in but on my sit on top doesn't matter what rod i have i have plenty of elbow room um it's cooler uh you know i used to want to say that bigger kayaks could handle bigger waves now a 12 footer probably could handle bigger water than my my nine and a half foot but my 10 foot is no better than my nine and a half foot i actually my 10 foot in my in my opinion is worse than my nine and a half foot uh in windy weather and um in current i do a lot of river fishing my nine and a half foot is is very pointed on the end it tracks very well and what tracking is is how your kayak moves back and forth when you paddle so the smaller sitting kayak when i paddle you know i'm going left right left right the front of my kayak is staying fairly straight and it's very quick my big one does not track near as well i got a much wider wobble from side to side um that's something to take it that's one problem with a bigger kayaks my little kayaks in the wind my little kayak doesn't there's less mass it's not sitting up as high and i don't get blown as hard so like say i'm anchored in the river and i got the wind hit me and the current hit me every now and then you'll get blown off your anchors and you'll move down a little bit till anchors catch again happens far less often in my little one than my big one now if i'm fishing lake michigan for salmon i think i really would want you know 10 foot or bigger um you know probably a 12 footer um you know you're going to be covering a lot of water i'd probably want pedals like a hobie or you know uh wilderness make some really cool stuff so and the, now the advantage of the sit-in is one it's lighter i can grab that thing you know um fairly easy mine is lighter than most but you can grab it throw it over your shoulder easier to move you're surrounded by plastic again so i don't have to be careful where i put my stuff if i want if i'm catching fish in a hurry i just got a pile of crap down by my legs you know i try to keep it organized but i don't have to also cold weather uh when you're kayaking in cold weather early spring late fall even winter if you can find some open water you're not getting as wet um you know not as much water's coming to you wind's not hitting your legs you know in the summer uh when i do have my shorts on i'm gonna sit in um i don't have to worry about sunburn as much um heat like that so kayaks are really cool and they will get you in places you can't imagine and if you have a minivan and you buy a 10 footer you're you can literally be in and out of your see that's the cool part about having a smaller kayak is i have buddies have some beautiful top line kayaks but it takes them you know 10 20 30 minutes to get their kayaks down and set up and you know a lot of times i'm in the water in five ten minutes and i can just pick up and change spots just pick it up throw it in the back of the minivan close the door and i'm on my way where they got to go worry about their straps or you know whatever it is that however whatever apparatus is holding their kayak to their cars so having a smaller kayak is um, much more versatile but bigger kayaks are uh, safer for much larger water um so now so first you want to go by budget and what you think which one you're going to like more or use more um then next thing you know is how you're going to rig it now what's kayak rigging well kayaks are kind of like boat or oh well, they are boats but i mean you can modify them some come with some basic rod holders in there maybe a you know a mount or two for this or that um they're getting they're coming up more and more stuff because this this sport is taking off just in leaps and bounds over the last two years you know we went from knowing like you know a few companies to there's you know a few dozen kayak company fishing kayaks out there now you know companies making them and they're modifying them each year and each year there's more and more innovation of storage just like bass just like the growth of bass boats of how these options are added for your rods and your lures and 
you know, the live walls came about and then different live walls and then different rod holders and, you know, trolling motors have grown over the years and that's the same way kayaks are evolving. So you go within your budget and you got to figure out how to rig it. Now, I do both bass. I'm a multi-species fisherman. That's what our, you know, this show is about. It's multi-species fishing. So, you know, when I'm bass fishing, you know, I want to have one rod holder, put one down, but I don't necessarily need two. But, and anchor isn't such a big deal if the wind's not bad because I want to keep moving and casting. Um, but you can build or buy what they call an anchor trolley, which is a, a ring. And in a lot of cases, in my case, I made it myself. So it's rope, um, some pulleys, and um, the ring holds your anchor and it slides up and down your kayak and helps you, you know, so you can push it. I can position it in the front of my kayak or the back of my kayak, depending on you know which way the wind is, what way the current's going. And then I added a uh, anchor cleat, which is basically just plastic that zigzags back and forth. You can put your line in, so I can put in a front anchor, and I use it a lot when I'm when I'm bait fishing. Keeps me from you know doing that whole boat swing, you know, when you're anchored in the wind or in the current. So that works for me. And then uh, most guys have figured out how to add locators one way or other and there's several different ways to mount those and have mount your transducer they have brackets where you can shoot right through the hull you know they're small guys i've seen guys like me they have just your your lorance three x and four x's and then guys have the, the big full screens on their big old kayaks um storage you can add storage to it you can add you know you can get dry bags you you know you can do your uh your lines all different way they have different uh rail systems uh, Ram makes one or tracks a uh, real real Zilla real, real, real Zilla, I think is the name of the company um, They both sell tracking systems that you can put on each side of your things so You can add whatever component and modules you want, you know your cup holder something to hold your phone your locator a couple rod holders you know uh, You know a GPS unit, you know a flag uh, so people can see you lighting whatever um, me I installed a locator on both of mine and you know I, I hid the you know hid the wiring underneath I installed um, double rod holders this way if I'm cat fishing carp fishing trout fishing whatever I can have two rods out at the same time um, they're both movable I have, I've had three different kinds of rod holders Ram makes some um, Atwood makes some I've had Atwood first really sturdy um, What's the other company? Scotty makes them. I have a, one that's a, a Scotty knockoff from Cabela's, which is, is pretty good as well. They sell extensions and stuff and different kinds of, of rod holders. And then I added a cup holder just because, uh, you know, I always want to have water with me, which makes me want to take a drink right now. And then, um, so I added that. And then the last thing, some come with storage on them, but a lot of them don't. But a lot of them come with bungees. And if that they don't come with bungees on there on the front and the back you can actually buy and add and rivet bungee systems on the front and back of your of, of a kayak you can turn basically turn a non-kayak a non-fishing kayak into a fishing kayak with all the accessories but what a lot of guys do and do like i did is we, you buy a crate of some kind or a milk crate and then i took you know we take pvc pipe and we cut it and paint it and add that alongside so you got you know, we strap it in the bunchies behind us, so we put our bag back there. I can I can hold up to five or six rods. Um, I have clips on there in case I'm fast water. I roll over, I don't lose my rods. So I have a, you know I have I have all that storage there. I you know plus the two rod holders that came with it. Technically, I can take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rods with me at any given time, which is pretty cool. Um, the most I usually take is five. I usually use one of the other ones holes for for my net. You want to make sure you have a good sturdy paddle. Um, the reason you don't want a cheap one, especially if you're like me and you're river fishing, a lot of times you're pushing off on rocks and off the shore and you're digging that your paddle and the thing to get that leverage to get going off the shore. So having a good paddle is important. But the most important thing that you want to do when you're kayak fishing is safety. Safety has to come first. It's like ice fishing. You can easily die. Uh, a friend of mine... Um, this weekend got very lucky um he was in a, pe a a pedal kayak with a rudder didn't have his paddle out and he had needed to make a turn turn his uh turn his kayak quickly and he couldn't do it as quick with the pedal and the rudder and this was in a river hit hit some logs 
it rolled over. He had his life preserver on, knew how to use it, thank God. Um, it rolled over. He went under, came up. I am so glad he's alive. Actually didn't lose that much stuff. The suction that was underneath his kayak ended up holding up, but he did lose, you know, you know, his phone and, you know, some other expensive stuff. I don't know if his locator works, but the main point is that he's alive and he was pre at least prepared for that. You know, they have sell what dry, dry bags, but you want to get some practice in. You need to always wear some, uh, a, P a personal flotation device whether it's the cheap orange ones or the really nice pull string ones you need to have it you don't want to die you know nobody wants you dying out there um so you want you don't want a whistle or a horn um you always want some flashlights with you uh, preferably waterproof ones leds if you're on the big water where there's lots of boats you want to put up some sort of flag so guys can see you out there um bring a headlamp with you some waterproof matches a lot of times you're going to be on smaller lakes and yeah, you can get to shore no problem. But what if you're in a river and you're doing a float, you know, and you crack your kayak or get an accident of some sort, you want to have a snack with you, maybe a thing, toilet paper, bug spray, sunscreen, definitely water. Um, if you're fishing in cold water, um, wet, you can, wet suits are cheaper. Um, they keep you warmer. So you know, uh, if you're fishing, you know, really early spring, really fall, winter, a wetsuit or a dry suit is absolute must. Now, one of my sponsors is Mythic Gear, who's a dry suit, and they make uh, what I call, what they call their tagline is "dry suit for the masses." And what they mean is, it's most dry suits cost a thousand dollars. These things are three hundred twenty-five bucks. I think they start at, and you know, most guys can afford that. And um, what they do is they keep you actually they they. They do what their name implies. Like what? So you still get wet, but to hold your body warm. These actually have gaskets around your legs. Well, they usually the stocking foot. You got gaskets around your wrists, and custom made gasket around your neck. So if you go in, no water gets in. You you put all your layers underneath um, the dry suit, and they have relief. You know, rubberized zippers and stuff. And you you have to make sure because getting hypothermia if you fall off is a big deal. You want to know how to get back on your kayak if you fall off. Um, Usually, you know, try not to go alone, but that's not always possible. So if you can't get somebody to go with you, to go with you. But you can fish for just about everything. Um, bigger fish, I think, are more fun in kayaks. Um, I do a lot of carp fishing now, which I never used to. You know, I used to just carp fish every now and then from shore. But once I did it from a kayak, we call it yarping. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in several shows because I do so much of it. But getting these big, strong river fish in this current in a kayak is awesome and it's completely incredible um if i'm how many times did i say um during this episode that you guys should be make a drinking game um so anyway if you haven't got a kayak and it's something you're thinking about or you would just you know you used to have a boat you didn't have a boat but you want to get in some water where you couldn't get in before get one and you can look on Craigslist. You can get used ones. You can, you know, you can start a bottom line. If you want to go go big and bold, do that. Uh, just make sure you're safe. Um, have fun with the rigging. I think rigging is a lot of the fun. Just planning where I'm putting my rod holders, my camera holders, and and, and my 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 water, my anchor trolley, and where's my where's where's my rods gonna go? And I, I mean, I I think it's a blast. So I, you guys should get a kayak. Um, Again, safety, decide what your budget is, what kind you want, how you're going to rig it, what you're going to go for, and start from there. And I hope to see you on the water uh, and have a great day. And uh, this is Pond Boy for Pond Boy's Angling Adventures. And this episode was brought to you by Mythic Gear Dry Suits. Have a great night, everyone.